this is my home. And I'm about two miles from the Baltimore city line. And as you can see, I have the Pan-African flag, at least the representation of it with the spin on it, because you see the stripes of the American flag and the stars, but it also has the red, black, and green. Now, this is my neighborhood. And like most of us watching this video, we are Americans. And this is what we're, we are familiar with. I was born and raised in Philly, but I've been here in the Baltimore area for quite some time. But back in January, I visited Ghana for the first time and the ancestors have been calling me home for quite some time. And I even legally changed my name years ago to reflect my heritage from the continent. A no quality means truth. And in January when I was there, I stayed with Amatsi Yahu in his uh, village for a little while and I got a taste of what it's like to be back home. And it just confirmed what I knew in my spirit that I need to come home. And the organic farm that he has there, living off the grid, this is something that I need to do. As a matter of fact, as soon as I finish taping this, I'm going to visit my friend in Baltimore City who has an organic farm right there in that urban jungle. So I'm going to learn how to do the organic farming. So I'm going to take that with me to Ghana when I come because I'm leaving Babylon. It's getting real here. So real. I'm standing with you right now talking to you without my mask, but I have to put this on in order to go see my friend. I'm on my way to my friend's house, Sally, who lives in West Baltimore. Now, when people normally think of Baltimore, they think of The Wire, they think of Freddie Gray, and rightfully so, but there's more to Baltimore than that. But the reason why Baltimore is that way in some areas is because of redlining. And redlining started right here in Baltimore. One out of every six houses in Baltimore are vacant and because of redlining there are food deserts throughout the city and people do not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables so my friend sally has started a community garden right in the heart of baltimore right in that urban jungle and she took a vacant lot with had a, a bunch of debris and she cleaned it out and she grows vegetables and fruits for those Baltimore City residents. And also she took the back porch of a row house, which is backing an alleyway and made that into her own personal greenhouse where she's growing a plethora of fresh fruits and vegetables. Let's go visit her. Originally from Ghana, but she's a globe trotter. She's been all over the world. Can you tell us where you've been? <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I lived in England for 30 years and then um, I moved to join my husband here in the States. I've been here uh, roughly five years now. Now we're actually, actually behind her home is a row home in Baltimore City and she has made a greenhouse right here in the city. So you see the plastic hanging up, but she has all kinds of herbs and vegetables growing so for those of us who think we can't do it because we don't live on a farm somewhere or in the suburbs with a lot of grass and a lawn you can do it in your backyard in the city what have you so can you explain to us what you have done here because that's your kitchen door by the way so we're right outside of her home this is like the back back way so we'll give you a, a look at that as many of you are familiar with. I mean, that's an alleyway behind a row house for those who are from the cities, such as I am. So can you tell us what you've done here? <laughs> okay. Um, we have three community gardens uh, and one school garden. 
So what we do is I do all the, the seedlings and then in, in winter and then in summer we transplant them in the community gardens. Okay. Yeah. So you do the seedlings in the winter and then once the time is right, the time of year, um, then you actually put them in the community gardens. Now, when you say community gardens, because maybe some of our viewers don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, I'll take you to one of the community gardens to show you. But it's a garden within the block mm -hmm. of buildings that um, those in the neighborhood come around, come together and garden. Okay. And it's not only gardening, but sometimes we chit chat, you know, Mm -hmm. Talk about what is going on and stuff like that. They're scanning yeah. all this. And just to give you perspective, we don't have a lot of room here. <laughs> this is Pepper. We're in a very small space, but there are a lot of plants here. Um, could you tell us the plants that you have here? Oh, okay. Um, I have herbs. In fact, we have harvested a lot of uh, Swiss chard already. Oh, Swiss yeah, chard. Uh, my friend, myself, you know, we did a lot of harvesting. I can give you photographs of oh, the good. harvest we did. Um, these are Swiss chard and these are tomatoes. <laughs> Swiss chard and tomatoes. Swiss chard and tomatoes. Uh, we have kale. Oh, kale. Yeah. And then we have a uh, parsley, uh, some spring onions. We have flowers. We have garlic. We have peppers. We have fruit in. We have tomatoes. The tomatoes we have about three types. Mm -hmm. You know the um, beef tomatoes, which we call the salad tomatoes, the big ones. Mm -hmm. And then we have the cherries, and then we have the plum tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. And so I have. Uh, some herbs here. These are uh, lectures that I'm raising. But these are sage. I have some mint. I have mint here. And um, a lot of mint in the... Yeah. Over there. Gosh, I need to water them here. So mint, sage. And then um, these are basil. That's uh, Italian basil. Now, will that stay like that, or does it? Oh, it's going to be, be big. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, plant it in plant a... it in the garden. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, my tomatoes! Are, the tomatoes are dying to go up because they they all big, big, ready to go. Okay. Ready to go in the garden, the community garden. So, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm putting a fence here. Well, I want people to see that you can do this no matter where you live, too. I know aesthetically it's not pleasing, but... Right. Now this is a compost, so it's um food or whatever underneath there. This is a compost pile. Okay, and we put all these things on top of it to prevent unwanted. I haven't finished building it yet. Okay. I need to put flour here and other pieces. In the meantime. The food scraps, and when I put the food scraps, I usually put some stuff on top so that the, the raccoons or the rats will not get to it. Yeah, yeah. We put leaves and we put so these are just your food scraps of food that you've eaten. Yeah. And is there any particular type of food, or are you just putting no, like no. orange peels or what? Eggshells. Eggshells, banana peels. Yes. Tomato, any 
just bring it here. Okay. You said tomatoes. I don't have anything left over from a tomato. I eat a tomato. Uh, and then you put the cardboard, anything over top of it to keep the rats, raccoons. Yeah, we're still, we're still building it. We haven't finished. But when we finish, we're going to close it up. Yes, Baltimore has its problems, but it has its heroes and heroines, like my friend Sally. With institutional racism, redlining, you have people such as her who have created community gardens which all can share from. Now I am learning how to create my own gardens in my home so I can be a self-sufficient gardener, but I also can help people. This is a wonderful thing. I love Baltimore and I love my people. Peace, prosperity, and purpose. From Baltimore, Ghana, and beyond. <laughs>